Hello, this is Domenico with the third part of this uh, short series on using an aggregate demand for labor and an aggregate supply of labor model to illustrate uh, the natural rate of unemployment. In part two of this uh, short series, we illustrated the aggregate supply and the aggregate demand, the equilibrium at point A, the equilibrium real wage, the equilibrium uh, quantity of labor employed at that real wage. And then we also illustrated the labor force, and we were mindful of the labor force being the sum of those that are unemployed, actively seeking a job but unable to find a job, and those that are currently employed at that real wage. So the distance between ASL1 and labor force is the natural rate of unemployment. And in that part two video, we want to understand that the distance between QE and QLF, quantity of labor force, or ASL, aggregate supply of labor and labor force, the distance between that is the sum of structural, frictional, and seasonal unemployment. So the distance between ASL1 and this brown curve here is the value of structural unemployment which is ASL2 plus ASL1 plus the quantity of structural unemployment. Then we also added the frictional unemployment. So the frictional unemployment is the sum of all those that are currently employed plus all those that are structurally employed plus the frictionally unemployed. And then we take into account the seasonal unemployment. Thus, we have our full labor force. The full labor force is the sum of all of those that are employed plus those that are structurally employed, those that are frictionally unemployed, and those that are seasonally unemployed becomes our total labor force. In this video, we're just going to simplify the model as you would for an exam and then analyze it. So again, here we are on the y-axis. We're measuring the average real wage rate, the quantity of labor on the x-axis. We're going to illustrate an upward sloping aggregate supply of labor curve supplied by the household. We'll label that aggregate supply A S, aggregate supply of labor in the macro economy, households providing that labor. Then we have demand, uh, demand driven by firms, firms demanding labor as an input in their production. So we have ADL or aggregate demand for labor. And that sets the equilibrium wage, real wage or real income in the economy which we labeled WE and the equilibrium quantity at QE. All right, then we will then move on to illustrating our labor force, which is the sum of our structural, frictional, seasonal uh, unemployed workers plus those that are currently working. So our labor force is the sum of number of unemployed plus number of employed. So here we have our labor force, and then we will continue our equilibrium wage across. And here we have the quantity of our labor force. And I'll, I'll label that quantity of LF labor force. Here's point A, here is point B, and we know that the distance between the aggregate supply of labor and our labor force, or quantity of employed labor and our quantity of labor force, is our natural rate of unemployment. So the distance between this point and this point, and this point and that point, is our labor force. I'm sorry, is our natural rate of unemployment. All right, so the distance between QE and QLF, that is our natural rate of unemployment. And we know that our natural rate of unemployment is equal to the sum of our structurally unemployed, our frictionally unemployed, and our seasonally unemployed uh, workers. So that's it. We have drawn this, 
and now I can go ahead and analyze it as we would for an exam. As can be seen, we have a model illustrating the natural rate of unemployment and also our labor force and our aggregates, our labor force that's composed of those that are employed and those that are unemployed. On the y-axis, we're measuring the average real wage rate. And on the x-axis, we're measuring the quantity of labor supplied and demanded in the economy. We have a downward sloping aggregate demand for labor curve labeled ADL, the demand driven by firms that are demanding labor as an input in their production process. We have an upward sloping aggregate supply of labor curve that's provided by households. Households own the factors of production. In addition, we also have an upward sloping labor force curve. Our labor force is composed of the number of unemployed plus the number of employed. Where ASL equals ADL, it provides an equilibrium wage at WE. And at WE, the quantity supplied for labor is equal to the quantity demanded for labor at QE, or at the equilibrium quantity. At that equilibrium real wage of WE, we also see that the labor force at point B is at a quantity of QLF. And we notice that the quantity of our labor force is greater than the quantity of labor employed at QE. Thus, the distance between QLF and QE illustrates the natural rate of unemployment, the quantity of labor that's actively seeking a job at that real equilibrium wage, but unable to find a job. So quantity LF minus the equilibrium quantity of labor that's demanded and employed illustrates our natural rate of unemployment, which is the sum of structural unemployed workers, frictional unemployed workers, and seasonally unemployed workers. In the United States, the natural rate of unemployment is approximately 5%. As we can see here, over a five or six decade period, we can see that unemployment is more or less hovering between four and 6%. So the long run average level of unemployment is about 5%. If uh, the economy is able to address structural, frictional, or seasonal unemployment, reduce that, then the gap between QE and QLF will decrease. If structural unemployment, frictional unemployment, seasonal unemployment increases, then the gap between QE and QLF will increase. Okay, and, and that's it. That is the goal of this video, just to quickly illustrate this model, understand it, and be able to explain it on an exam. If you have any questions, feel free to comment those questions below, and don't forget to subscribe and to like. Thank you.